Nothing says Britain more than... Nope. Nope. Keep going. Ah, oh, yes. There it is. A nice cup of tea. We know we have China to thank for introducing tea to the Western world. But how did it make its way to England and become the cultural obsession it is today? Well, that's all thanks to one Portuguese woman. The year, 1662. The person? Catherine of Braganza. She had just won the hand of England's King Charles II. With the help of a very large dowry, including money, treasures and spices, this worthwhile trade made her the Queen of England, Scotland and Ireland. When she arrived to her new homeland, she brought with her packets of loose leaf tea in crates labelled Transport de Ervas Aromaticas. It's a theory that this was later abbreviated to TEA. Tea. Now tea could already be found in England, but was only really used for medicinal purposes. Catherine continued drinking tea to her heart's content. Mm. And as the new royal, everything about her, including her beverage habits, was copied by other ladies, desperate to be just like their idol. Another thing Catherine brought to the table from Portugal was the idea of tea drinking experience. She popularised the use of porcelain teacups and mugs. By the end of the 17th century, much of British aristocracy were enjoying the hot beverage. Ooh, delightful. And soon enough, so was everyone else. Today, while tea can be found pretty much everywhere, it remains a special daily pastime for the Brits. Mm. So carry on and drink tea, people of England. The legend around this chalk is that it's impossible to write a false theorem. I assume the special ingredient was angel tears. Mathematicians from all the top schools very frequently use it. It's a cult favorite. As soon as I used it, I was a convert. The chalk is one of the best kept secrets in the math world. It's the Rolls Royce of chalk. Hagoromo is a brand of Japanese chalk. The way it flows on a board is a bit hard to describe in words. It's really hard to get. You can only get it from Japan. You need a Japanese person to bring it back for you. I discovered it when I went to visit the University of Tokyo, and one of the professors there said to me, you know, we have better chalk than you do in the States. And I said, oh, go on, chalk is chalk. And so I tried it out, and I was surprised to find that he was right. I tried it, I thought it was phenomenal. It's the densest, it erases the cleanest, it leaves the nicest line. If you use bad chalk, often you have to press really hard for anyone to see what you're writing. So using Hagarama on a good board, it doesn't really feel like you're working hard to write. When I'm teaching, I get a feeling of energy, confidence, and the chalk absolutely helps. Slowly the math world has become aware of this, and it became a bit of a a fad in some circles. It was like maybe four years ago, the word came out that the company was going out of business. I sort of jokingly referred to it as a chalk apocalypse, so I immediately started hoarding up as much as I could. I ordered three boxes of Hagaramo and kept it in my office and used it very sparingly. I should have bought more, but I have friends that bought boxes and boxes and boxes of the stuff. They might very well be set for the rest of their career. We got like 1,500 sticks. That's a lot of days, four sticks a day. I think I'm gonna make it. I have probably a 10 year supply still at home. I calculated how many boxes would I need to last for 10 or 15 years. I didn't want to become a chalk dealer, but I did like the idea that I could be the first stick is free chalk dealer on the block in my department. I was probably selling it regularly to maybe eight to 10 colleagues. I would reach into my cupboard in my office and pull out another box and we'd do the deal in my office. And we all had a chalk fix, and we still do. The original Hagaroma chalk is slowly disappearing. A few years ago, uh, a Korean company bought their formulas and did the best job of faithfully reproducing it in Korea. It was mixed emotions. I was happy to know that it would still be made, but I was a little disappointed that I was less clever than I thought I was. In many ways, mathematics is like craftsmanship. In some ways it's like artistry, in some ways it's like science. But there's a real high craft side to giving a beautiful lecture on a blackboard. 
Mathematicians admire this in each other and like to use the best tools for it. There's incredible value to this, but the value is in using it up, not hoarding it. For millions of Japanese people, springtime means one thing, baseball. But what a fan probably doesn't think about, what happens to all those broken baseball bats? Well, one chopsticks manufacturer has an answer. The 1921年に親父が起業しまして、え、ここで作られてる橋はですね、折れたバットから再生するっていう意味で、お橋を作ったり、バットを作るときに出る端材、こういったものの普通の橋に使ったり。Wood from the Ayodamu tree was popular for making fine wooden products and professional baseball bats. But because of forestry mismanagement, the species was in trouble. Ayodamu no ki sono mono ga desu ne, kokatsu shite morimasu shi, de shokuju to batto no sono tsukau ryo to ga balanza atte nai desu ne. Shinbun de keisai ga atta desu ne. Ayodamu no yakiwaru yakiu no batto ga don don naku natte kite ru. 野球界、野球関係者ですね。マットの関係者の新聞の掲載があったんです。Instead of contributing to the problem, Mr. Uratani had an idea. 青玉のそのマットを作るときに出る端材っていうのは当然私たちの橋にも十分使えるでしょうから。With that, Mr. Uratani put his plan into motion. 折れたマットを各球団で集めていただいて、全国から。with the profits from these baseball chopsticks, Mr. Uratani has joined baseball leagues and teams to donate to a group planting a new forest of Aodamo trees. 本当に貴重な材木になりましたね。これはもう今環境ってものは汚しちゃいけないし、環境の中に生かされてますからね。宇宙、地球の中に生かされてるっていう思いは私はすごく強いですね。It's plastic, it's most likely beige, and it sounds like this. Chances are, if you grew up in the United States, you've played a recorder. It was a non-negotiable part of your elementary school education. And for that, you can thank this guy, Karl Orff, a passionate German composer. Originally, the recorder was handcrafted, wooden, and made for the highest of society. Even Vivaldi and Bach wrote pieces for the recorder. It doesn't rely on a reed or strings, just breath. It's in the flute family. In the 1960s, the recorder started being produced out of plastic, cheap plastic. So how did it become the clumsy, awkward sound we all used to play? That's where Orff comes in. He saw the recorder as an easy way to get kids to start playing music. The logic was simple. The recorder relies on rhythm rather than memorization. If you can sing, you most likely can play it. Orff had the best of intentions to inspire the next generation of musicians. And even though they can sometimes be annoying, our hats are off to you, sir, for changing the course of music education for generations to come.
Let's play a game. Think of a famous painting. Guess what? You just thought of me. Today, I'm the world's most renowned work of art, but it wasn't always this way. My story is full of surprises, and it all began in a studio in Florence. Well, here's the master himself, Leonardo da Vinci. He worked on me on and off for a few years towards the end of his career. You're a minor work, my dear. Some interesting shading, nothing more. We'll just see about that. Over the next 300 years, I hung quietly in French palaces and royal bathrooms. The things I've seen. Ah, mon dieu! Until finally I was noticed by a man who had already made quite a name for himself. When Napoleon chose me to hang on his bedroom wall, people took notice. I look forward to sleeping with you, ma chérie. After he had his whole exile from France thing, they tossed me on a wall at the Louvre. But at this point, I was still just another Renaissance portrait. Until one night. Bella. I was stolen. It was pandemonium. Paris was in an uproar. The police hauled people in left and right. The hysteria hit a fever pitch when the police suspected and interrogated one of the most famous artists in the world, Pablo Picasso. J'accuse. But Picasso was innocent. The thief turned out to be an Italian carpenter. He was caught in Florence. Mamma mia! And I returned to the Louvre. From that day forward, I became the darling of the art world. Everyone wanted to see Napoleon's da Vinci painting Picasso was suspected of stealing. Soon, tourists crowded in, and most people forgot why I was famous in the first place. That might raise some eyebrows, but not mine, since I don't have any. Oh, you didn't notice I don't have any eyebrows? I told you, I'm full of surprises.